So, hey, welcome to the, the front porch, Avery. Thanks, Brian. Welcome to the front porch with Brian Beaudry. Avery, I'll let you introduce yourself, actually. So we'll start off with our first questions, which is, who are you? Where are you from? Uh, I'm Avery DeBose, Vice President of Rental Guys. We're equipment rental company out of Northern California. I live in Chico, and we cover Sacramento to the Oregon border, and then we have two locations in Northern Nevada now, one in Reno and one in Carson City. Okay, that sounds like quite a lot to manage. And, it's quite a bit, uh, but that's what makes it fun, right? You keep coming in every day with the positive attitude and the excitement to make it all happen. So do you have to visit all of these? Lo- how often do you visit all these locations? I assume you visit well, them I wouldn't say point. I have to. I would say I get to. <laughs> okay, uh, fair. It's, it's, a, it's a great challenge to have to go around and spend time at all the locations and see our staff. But we have a great team of regional managers. They're actually here with me at the conference, the three guys that are here today. Um, and they each have different regions with branches in them, and they manage those. And then I, I more work with them directly, and then they work with the branches one-on-one. Okay, so you don't just, like, use it as an excuse to go somewhere you want to? <laughs> um, <laughs> no, not really. Oh, okay. I, I go where I need to be more so. That sounds but, responsible of you. Yeah. That's why you're a vice president. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, I do get to travel around quite a bit, but it's more on a – it's more calculated. I'm not just going just to make a visit, typically. Okay. All right. I can respect that. Uh, okay. We, we usually have a third question. So what's what's one suggestion you'd give a friend in the industry who isn't a direct competitor for 2024? Well, that's a good question. I would want to, if it was a friend, I'd know a little bit about their business. I'd probably give more pointed, calculated advice, but I would say that if you're not utilizing the data and using some of the partners that Point of Rental has and some the peer groups, where I'm a member of peer executive groups and ARA, there's so many data companies and integrations and there's definitely a line between not enough and too much. But if you're not utilizing any of it and you're not kind of close to that sweet spot, that middle of using Rouse or whatever, whatever the program may be for you, you should definitely take a hard look at that and make sure that you're getting the access to, you're getting the same data that all your competitors are using and you giving yourself that competitive advantage. Okay. Now what's a suggestion that you'd give, let's say a friend of me, someone who's maybe a a competitor and you want to give them advice that sounds good at least, but you're kind of hoping like maybe it doesn't work out. (laughs) But it's Uh, okay if it does work out. Sure. That's true. Um, I don't know. That's a, that's a good question. I, I, I would say the first thing that comes to mind is interest rates and spending. And if, if you can keep spending and spend hard and just not worry about the interest rates, but you know, it might, might be a problem for you. Pretty <laughs> soon. I, I guess I, I, uh, that's definitely a pressing issue for everybody is interest rates and equipment mm-hmm. availability and equipment cost. So I would probably be more along the lines of that. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, I hadn't really considered it for the uh, expensive things that that y'all buy. <laughs> yeah, there's there is definitely some expensive pieces of equipment, and they keep becoming more expensive faster than you can keep track. <laughs> usually, okay. Well, all right. Did you grow up wanting to be uh, a a vice president in a rental operation? I did. I did. Ever since I was a little kid, I spent time at my dad's rental company, Rental Guys, and mm-hmm. started out picking up nails in the yard uh, off the scissor lifts and trailers and things that came back in. And he would give me, I believe it was a dime or it was either a dime or a nickel and nail. And I did that for a while when I was like five or six years old and uh, eventually got smart and found a box of nails and would sprinkle them out and then pick up, pick (laughs) them all back up. And I think that was when he realized, okay, it's time to graduate on to something else. I'll teach you how to use a pressure washer and then, as soon as I was strong enough to hold the wand or the pressure washer, I would pressure wash equipment and um, just work Wait, my way up from there. So you wanted to do it all the way from when you started picking up nails, because that doesn't sound like a thing that like. When I was that young, <laughs> I probably didn't. I probably didn't have the thought process that's to fair. realize that's what I wanted. But 
uh i enjoyed i was a little kid that had all the models of the equipment and played with the okay. models and those were my toys so being around the real stuff was really exciting like the first time you get to run a bobcat yeah that's yeah. that's a big deal imagine if you're like playing with other kids it's like oh yeah but i got the real thing so yeah exactly <laughs> they they thought it was awesome they wanted to go out there and be around the, the real toys versus you know whatever they True. were playing with it is much it is much more fun gi joe becomes ones. a lot <laughs> less cool when you have when your friend has a real bobcat that you can drive at your house Ooh, did you combine it and like you use the bobcat to like play with the gi joes we, we i don't think we did but we should have <laughs> <laughs> all right maybe maybe that would have been awesome you can you can pass that one on yeah uh so i the next question is what got you into the rental industry but like from like day one it sounds like so yeah, it's a family legacy my grandpa started in the rental business the company or rent, our company was established in 1959 mm -hmm. and then uh he he bought it in 1972 the original owner his name was guy guy rents was the name of the company he passed away okay. and my grandpa bought it from his widow in 72 and then uh, it was guy rents until 2011 when my dad became the full 100 percent owner of rental guys and then changed the name from um guy rents to rental guys Okay, that explains some of our, our uh, data back at the office. <laughs> yeah, it says guy rents in there, guy rents DBA rental guys. That's that's what that's about. Okay, so when it when the name changed from guy rents to rental guys, you guys wanted to keep that as an homage, or you just wanted? Uh, it was is more just a paperwork issue that it's much easier just to have a DBA versus change your legal corporate name. Okay. So that that's the reason. But why did you choose to do business as rental guys instead of guy rents? Uh, branding purposes, really marketing. It rolls off the tongue a lot better. And then my dad has always done these commercials on TV. Uh, okay. Please and, tell me this is on YouTube somewhere. Oh, it's on YouTube. Oh, and I'd be happy to share it too, but they're out there. But he created this character called Rental Guy. And it's it's a you can tell just by looking at the shot when he comes into frame, but it's clearly based off Superman. Okay. Very similar costume with a hard hat and RG right here on the chest and a cape and everything. And he created this character kind of, in, I believe it was in the late 90s, maybe really early 2000s, but it's been over 20 years that it's been running. And um, that kind of created this character of Rental Guys. And then it was more fitting that people rec would see him or identify Rental Guy with Guy Rents anyway. So yeah. it was just made sense to change the name to Rental Guys. All right, I like it. So, who, are we allowed to know the secret identity of Rental Guy or Alex Debose? It's my dad. Okay, and he's yeah. he's gonna stick with it, and he's gonna keep being Rental Guy for a long while. I think so. Okay, there's been some discussions on what's the future <laughs> of the character. Yeah, maybe maybe a different superhero in my mm -hmm. iteration is a possibility, but gonna create a, a little multiverse type it could thing be it could okay. be a rental guys multiverse i have a younger brother that works in the business too my uh my family also has five bobcat dealerships okay that's its own separate corporation oh you really do have multiverse op yeah there. so there's definitely there could be a there could be some opportunity there for that all right but my dad wants to be rental guy still and I think he's he's earned the right to be rental guy as long as he wants to be. Yeah, you can't you can't take that away from him. That no, really especially because it's so in our area. There's so many people. Oh, that's rental guy, and they you know it's definitely definitely has some recognition. So it is always fun to be to be recognized, especially if it's going to be a, a cool character like rental guy sounds like. Yeah. Yep. All right. What's your favorite part about working in the rental industry? Um, that's a good question. There's so many things that come to mind, but I, the first thing that is hands down above and beyond anything else is the, the change and the, the, you get to be so versatile in your role. There's, you don't just go to an office and do one thing all day. You're not just sitting in a cubicle and writing contracts or you're not answering the phone all day. It's, it's one of 10 different things and no day, no two days are the same. So I would say that's the, that's my favorite part. I'm not someone it's not that, still playing with the machines. <laughs> I'm, you know, that's <laughs> some people that's, that's a big deal for them. But for me, once you've driven a Bobcat so many times, <laughs> or you've run a telehandler so many times, it's not that exciting anymore. Okay. Um, so I, I would say the change and then being 
we're, we're a, such a growth oriented company. We've grown so much over the last 10 years, the challenge of growing and how do you find the next location or how do you get on this big project to this job site and the challenge of that yeah. is what's really exciting and what makes me so passionate about what we do is it's not, it's challenging and it's always a different challenge. There's no predictability. Ooh, are you going to like break some news here? Are you looking at expanding somewhere else right now or we go wherever the opportunity <laughs> is. I, okay. There's no news to break, but oh. um, yeah, we're always looking for opportunity, but all right, cool. So yeah, I won't, I won't press you too hard. <laughs> I was going to say, I, don't, I think I might let you down on that one. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah. Um, how did you know when you were ready for your current role? I, I know, obviously, you started picking up nails. I assume that you didn't go from picking up nails to pressure washing immediately to vice president. No, there's definitely, <laughs> a, definitely a gap period there. Okay. So are you working at Rental Guys for this entire time, like growing up? and Or was there a point where you were ever considering not being a part of the company? No, there's never a point where it wasn't considered not being or considering not being part of the company. But um, most of this time, we're talking five or six years old, picking up nails. So obviously, yeah. I'm going to school for a long period of that time. And I would say the first really serious role, legitimate, uh, where I had a seat on the org chart is the best way to describe okay. it, is in 2013. Uh, I'm dating myself here. I was a freshman in high school. I had just gotten into high school at the very end of 2013. Okay. Cool. And I had been writing contracts. I started writing. I First time I used Point Rental, I was nine years old, and I learned how to write up propane, and we sold bulk material at the time. Okay. So those are very, you enter a quantity and collect the money, very simple tasks. So I learned how to do that. And then over that period of time, or a, f a four or five year period, I learned how to write up contracts and actually use it. And then my dad, my dad is, uh, our company has always been, we're, ne we're never overstaffed is the best way to describe <laughs> it. He's always looking like, how can I get someone else to help me on the side? So I don't have to, you know, hiring good people yeah. is, or hiring people is hard nowadays and hiring good people is even harder. So For sure. he was always trained to have my brother and I help and be a part of the company, which, it's what Thank you have God he for. did. Looking back on it, of course, but um, yeah, I, in high school you have off-campus lunches. So having some money for off off-campus lunches, <laughs> he can't. Or me wanting to have money for off-campus lunches, he told me if I learn how to work on the counter on the weekends and be one of the weekend counter guys, uh, he would pay me X amount of money for off-campus lunches for during the week. So that was the first time where I was on a schedule, and every Saturday. I think at the time we were open, we, our hours have changed over the years, but I think it was it was 7 or 7.30 to 4 or 5, and then Sundays was 8 to 4. And I do I did started out doing Saturdays, and then for a year and a half span, I did Saturday and Sunday because I started getting a taste of that, yeah. that money, and I, I thought, this is pretty sweet. So school all week and weekends, you're working? Yeah, for, a, for right. about a year and a half. And then my dad told me that he didn't want me to work on Sundays anymore because I was going to become a senior. And, you know, you've, you've yeah. been a senior in high school before. There's I a have. lot going on and yeah. fun. And so that was, that was a good move, too. And then I just did Saturdays. And then I continued to do Saturday, work on Saturdays until maybe a year or two ago. I did a long okay. time. Nice. Like eight or nine years. So you, you get made vice president. Do you have any doubts or like apprehension or is there anything you're afraid of or do you just feel like I've grown up in this business, I know pretty much everything I need to know? What was, what was um, challenging for you? I wasn't really afraid of anything. I would say my dad had always given me great advice going growing up about uh, when you're the owner's son, that's a different set of rules, right? His exact words were, the hardest challenge you're going to have is getting not being the owner's son and earning respect of all the people that work for the company, which yeah. I would give. That's a great piece of advice that I would give to someone that's coming into the rental business as a next generation is uh, getting out of the shadow of your your dad or your mom or whoever, your uncle or whoever it is. Yeah. You got to earn that. 
and it, it entails hard work, showing up early, working hard, not leaving early, not breaking the rules. You got to follow the same rules as everybody else and even stricter rules. And keep those Saturday shifts. And keep those Saturday <laughs> shifts for a while. Yeah, you got to prove that you're there and you're serious. So um, that was really the hardest challenge as far as the the operations side of things and working in the rental business, there were really no concerns or challenges there because it was stuff that either I already knew, like, this is not a strength of mine. I'm going to have to find someone on our team that is really good at this and we'll work together and play to our strengths. Or it was something I felt that it was a strength already, so it wasn't a worry. And then, of course, any person that is in a high level of leadership for the first time, there's a lot of trial and error. But uh we we had a good situation to where i could do that and not cause any main damp any big damage and you learn from your mistakes exactly you learn from your mistakes all right cool Hmm. oh yeah i would always like to ask everyone is there anything you ever bought that you didn't think would rent like maybe maybe someone else had to convince you and it's like all right i guess if it means that much to you like we'll get this we'll try it out and and it just really surprised you and it was super popular um or altern- alternately is there anything that you thought would be super popular and just it never went off it never went out there's probably more of those <laughs> than the other those, one, those are the ones like people tend to remember i think yeah there's there's more of those um we i remember one time i bought this concrete grinder for flooring inside and you could it worked off an air compressor Mm -hmm. and i thought it was going to be this great thing i was i was pretty convinced by one of the managers that it was going to be a great thing and we never rented that thing ever i think it went out one time in like four years and we got rid of it and then more recently on the other side of the question uh if you ever seen those paver viver plates they don't have a plate on the bottom they have those uh they're a really hard plastic roller and they they pack pavers, but because they're not steel, mm-hmm. uh, they don't chip the pavers, so that's the benefit of it. That does seem nice. I saw those at the show, and I thought they were really cool, but I thought we just didn't have the demand for it. And uh, one of our Nevada locations this year encouraged me to get one, and it's we've actually done pretty well with it. So nice. that that would be one of one that comes to mind. All right. Well, it's it's good that one worked out. Man. <laughs> yeah. If if someone suggests something and it doesn't work out, do you hold it against them forever? Or how do you avoid <laughs> holding it against them? Uh, everybody has a swing and a miss every once in a while. But it, when it's the third or fourth <laughs> swing and a miss, then maybe uh, you, you start thinking, I shouldn't listen to that guy anymore because <laughs> the advice he's given me hasn't been very good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah. Okay, let's play. Oh, let's see. What would this, what would this be called? I don't know. I don't have a good one. And normally I come up with something based on the name, but let's say, let's play Avery or Navery. If you agree with the statement, say Avery. And if you disagree with it, say Navery. All right. All right. I'm also going to need a reason for all of these. So okay. Avery or Navery, you've cheated at a board game. Uh, let's stick to like. Avery is if I have done it or if yeah. I haven't. If, I would it, say knavery then. All right. You're you're like very anti board game cheating. I play by the rules for the most part. Okay. Cuz if if you win and you cheated, you didn't yeah. it doesn't feel very good. That's true. Okay, I I I respect that. I I like not cheating at board games as well. Uh Avery or Navery, if you could find out how you're going to die, you would want to know. I've thought about this many times cuz you hear people talking about it and I've mm-hmm. thought about it and uh, I think I would want to know. So I'd I'd say, is that Avery? If if you want to know, hmm, that's Avery. Okay, the Avery. Then I would say I would I, I would want to know. Okay, are you gonna try? It's it's. I wonder if it can possibly change <laughs> the way you would die. <laughs> if you find out like it's a really horrible death. Yeah, that's like that's I what I would want to know. Is it, if I find <laughs> out, quick. is it set in stone and it's just fade? Am I locked into this contract of my life where yeah. I can't change it? Or if I find out, can I make it better? It's <laughs> fair. Yeah. Okay, Avery or Navery, you've told an outrageous lie to a child. I've done that so many <laughs> times. Uh, 
it's what kids are for. Is Avery, really. yeah. Okay. Is is there a particular really good line that you wanna that you wanna share? Um, it's okay to say no. Not no, <laughs> not really. That comes to mind, but I I have younger cousins. Exactly. And growing up, I'm sure I told them so many <laughs> stories that were not true. And I have a grandpa that he always says, "It's my story. I, I'll tell it the way I want it." So I I I kind of learned that from him. He tells all kinds of stories. All right. Yeah. It, I mean. It's part of being a kid is you you got to have this more, uh, yeah, it's just storytelling. Yeah, I, I tell stories to adults too. <laughs> oh. It's not exclusive to kids. Uh, you're only telling me the truth though, right? <laughs> of course, of course. Okay, okay, good. I wouldn't do that to you. Uh, Avery or Navery, there's something you believe that no one seems to agree with you about. Um, I, I, would, I would agree with that, yeah, let's say. What do you believe that no one else agrees with you about? Um, it's more of a conspiracy theorist All right. type of thing, but I believe that, uh, well, I read some articles about it and I, having poor quality drinking water is, is like a eight. If you have poor quality drinking water, a lot, there's studies that show that that is like 80% of how cancer cases get started is people's exposure to poor quality drinking water over a long period of time yeah so i, I have a whole water filtration <laughs> system in my house and i only try to drink like high quality filtered water mm, and so, so many high quality h2o guy <laughs> exactly yep uh, the water boy right there but um yeah so many people just drink tap water and crappy water and i guess I, this is a it's something i've th developed that thought i've developed over the past couple of years but yeah. there's definitely something to it that's fair I think that there's like, yeah, I'm I'm not going to get into that. We're not going to go for a long, <laughs> a long thing on this. Yeah. Uh, Avery or Avery, you're all in on new technology like AI and augmented reality. I would, I would say Avery on all in. I would say that I see the pros and cons to it, but mm -hmm. I saw a video the other day of a, a AI made machine, I guess you would call it, but it looked like a person. And it was playing tennis with pro tennis players, and it was almost better than they were. So I think to have technology that, that it's that high level, it's kind of scary to think about it. Yeah, it's like, we don't need to make it better. We're <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like when someone can't beat the machine anymore, that's a problem. Yeah, yeah, okay. All right, we're, we're in agreement on that. We're yeah. a little concerned. Yeah. So I'm a pet lover. I have a dog. I call him Dirk, you know, Dirk the dog. I asked Dirk a very important question, just to challenge his intelligence, because we like to do that. I asked him, I said, hey, what's two minus two? He said nothing. What's a trait that successful leaders have in common, in your opinion? Uh, I, I Sorry, we got back into serious questions. Again. That's okay. I would say that the ability to build a strong team is, is first and foremost. You see any successful company, you see there's maybe a few people that are really successful in the world that it's they're, they've achieved most of their success by their a really smart investment that they made that they didn't really have a lot of team behind them. But the, if you're looking at a company or most corporations, they're really successful because they have strong people. Yep. And they have good systems in place to put their people in a position to make good decisions. And they play to each other's strengths. Mm -hmm. So I think that a leader that can't, number one, identify all their people's strengths and weaknesses and then play to those is going to have a really hard time being successful to a high level. Yeah. And building something that uh, is, what's the term I'm looking for? Building a, Building a company that has a, has a lifespan further than the main leader and mm. something that's sustainable is the word I'm looking for. There we go. Mm -hmm. They're going to really struggle when that company's built around one person that has all these strengths and the team behind them is not strong. Yeah. It, that's, that's not going to work for very long. Yeah. I like that. Uh, in one of your earlier answers, you mentioned that like you already identified and like, this is not my strength. I got to find someone who's going to augment that. So mm -hmm. it sounds like you're, uh, you have that ability. So yeah, 
appreciate that. <laughs> but and then also having the trust too. Yeah. Yeah. You find this person and they have this strength and you know they're better at something than you are, but you you're still the leader. You're the yeah. boss, so you have the ability to to kind of trump what their opinion was. Well, if you're doing that, then are you really you're not really helping yourself. Yeah, you got to trust them. I was gonna say, did you ever have like a time where that was tough for you or is like um i think there's certain situations where you have a disagreement with somebody but as long as you do a really good job and make a conscious effort of trying to understand where they're coming from and why they feel the way they feel yeah and i'm a data guy so i want to see well you're making this decision and you have all this these opinions and all this but what's it based off of yeah is this just a hunch or do you have some numbers and then I'm a reasonable guy. If I see numbers and they all make sense, then okay, they're that's pretty pretty clear and dry. And then, but on the emotional side, then yeah, maybe sometimes you have a disagreement. But it's all about trust. If you really trust and respect that person, sometimes you gotta yeah. you gotta let them make the decision. And if they fail, they learned, and you learn together. Yeah. All right. I like those. Uh, when I was younger, I was a lot more possessive of stuff like. If I were to say own a rental business, I'm not sure I would be real happy with letting stuff people take my stuff, <laughs> and especially like when it comes back all, all messed up. Because I've seen some of these pictures in like the the industry groups, and it's like, oh man, ooh, there, I would there's not some be. bad ones out there. <laughs> so is that something that you have, or is this something that is? I guess how easy is it to uh, get used to the idea of like, hey, people are going to take my stuff; they're going to mistreat it. All the time, um, or do you just never view it as your yeah, stuff? Yeah, n- I just never really view it as my stuff. Like, would I rent my personal vehicle out or something? <laughs> no, okay. but if it's in the rental fleet, then that's its its purpose for the purpose. Of yeah, it. exactly. So that doesn't really okay bother me. What's the most messed up thing someone's uh, done with any of your equipment? Um, we, a couple of years ago, we had someone that drove they drove our machine down by a pond and then the bank broke and they sunk it in the water. Uh, so that's pretty bad. There's yeah, that's, that's hard to come back from. Yeah. And then we've had several machines rolled over the years over what with, with them being hauled or, um, yeah, on a, one was on a bridge. That's fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then you get the, stuff tips over on its side but that i don't know that that's too bad that's pretty common in certain pieces of equipment yeah i guess i guess if it's common then it's probably not as bad but yeah it feels like you know it's not made to be on its side. i think if please, something's please totaled don't. that's pretty bad if it's rolled then you can put it back on its on its tires and fix it it's that happens okay that's that's your like limit is once it's totaled then right. that's pretty bad <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay if it's totaled yeah. Anything shy of total is like, ah, eh, all right, we'll deal with Another it. Another day at the office. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so this is our first time ever trying this game, so thank you, Avery, for, for being willing to. I'm the uh, test dummy. <laughs> exactly. Thank you for <laughs> being willing pig. to do that. Uh, anyway, you're going to give us a top five list. You can choose whatever top five list you want. Okay. Okay. Um, but we'll have to start with number five and count up to one because obviously if you tell everyone the number one, who cares about the rest of the The rest five, of right? them don't matter. Exactly. Yeah. So we'll we'll add some sound effects in in post so it'll like have appropriate fanfare and you'll we'll have some excitement. But all right. We're gonna need this top five list. What is your top five list gonna be about? Um let's pick something point of rental uh related. That'd probably be good for the Okay. Do you have five favorite reports? Yeah, I could probably name five favorite reports. Okay. Let's do your number five favorite report. Uh, my number five related report is not that exciting, but it's probably the sold asset report because we sell a lot of machines okay. in and out of our fleet. So that gives me, it's a good report for me to go and see, oh, what, what do our sales people or sales people sell today that now we need to replace or whatever yeah it seems like a good idea to replace the stuff that you sell yeah okay your number four favorite point of rental report uh number four uh the commissions report i run the commissions report a lot to see who's doing well and who's selling and what they're selling and 
Okay, I'm, good, I'm noticing a theme know. with five and four here. Yeah. Okay, what's your number three favorite report? Um, I, I would say probably the call log. It's There's a bunch of different reports for call logs, but call log by grouping, and then I group them by the operator so you can see who's talking to which customers and what interactions they're having. Uh, this this kind of covers everybody in the company, so I, I like it because you can see what the outside sales reps are doing. You can see what the counter people are doing and who they're talking to and what interactions are they having. Are they having customer problem issues that they're calling in? Are we having scheduling problems? Are we calling just to see how the rental's doing and rental's going great and they're happy, which is always what you want to see. But yeah. it gives you a good idea of with 11 different locations spread out all over yeah. one area and in two different states, it's hard. You can't be at every location standing there listening to what they're doing. So this is kind of a good insight to see what people are up to. All right. That one sounds pretty interesting. Yeah. I, I haven't heard of that one being mentioned before. Yeah. All right. Number two, favorite report. Point of rental. Um, there is a a report. It's called um, it's called the re repair items, okay. open repair items, and you can go in by branch and see the days of a of a uh, IRO being open. Okay. So you can see like, oh, this machine's been down for ninety days. Let's look, and then it has all the details and the parts and the breakdown and the comments of everything related to that so you can kind of dig into who's working on this so we can get this machine yeah. back in service and what's the situation well so, it was it was found in a pond <laughs> yeah exactly oh yeah this sank to the bottom of a pond okay yeah. it's probably not going to come back soon and then there's a lot that you can see and uh sometimes some of our service people will put a machine down on an iro yeah internal repair order which means it's broken and can't be rented and it should be an IMO, internal maintenance order. Mm. And this report's so simple. It takes the da the day at a glance dashboard. Mm -hmm. uh, the IR Instead of looking at the IROs tab there, it puts it all on paper in a report, like a quick digest so you can get through it really quickly and kind of filter out like this one needs to get closed. Yeah. this is, It gives you a good idea. It's always better when you can go through a report quickly. Instead exactly. Of, instead of toggling through a bunch of tabs and looking at them all, it's it's so much more efficient. Okay. Now, obviously, we're down to the last one. So what is your number one favorite point of rental report? Probably the top customer's report. It's because you want to see by branch who who's dealing with which customers, which customers are in your top categories and um you want to you want to make sure that you're keeping those maintain relationships healthy and maintaining them and doing right by your customers because you want them to stay in the top, of course. All so right, I like that report. All right, customers first. All right, customers like first. It. That's what we learned about Point of Rental today, right? <laughs> I was going to say thank you for being very on brand with. Uh, yeah. With that. <laughs> All right, let's do the five important questions. I'm sorry we wasted your time with all these other questions, which were totally unimportant. <laughs> we're no gonna problem. Do these five important ones. Five important questions. Five important, five questions. important questions. Five important questions. So what would you say, the first one is, what would you say is your greatest success in life? Greatest success in point. life. I haven't, I don't have too much experience in the game of life. I'm pretty young still, but um, top five success in life. Um, I bought my first house at 21. Nice. So I think that's a, that's a pretty big success so far. And then being in a position of leadership at a young age and in the family business is definitely a success that I'm really proud of. And it's always something I wanted to do. Yeah. So somewhere between the two of those, one's more personal, one's professional. All right. I like it. I like to balance both of them. Yeah. And I feel like, yeah, you're a vice president. Come on. have <laughs> You got to have at least a little success there. Okay, if you could go back in time and give yourself one piece of advice when you started your career, what would it be? That's a good question. I, I think about this often, too. I, I would say that um, there's so many small little details that are going to happen over the course of a day that, yeah, they're frustrating and they shouldn't be that way, but in the grand scheme of things, they don't really matter. So letting letting yourself worry about all these things that, aren't really worth the ener that much energy to worry about. I would say would a big would be a big thing and and um 
not being so egotistical, controlling your ego and putting your ego at the door and just focusing on your goals and what you want to accomplish versus how it makes you feel and how it makes you look to everybody else, you'll accomplish so much more focusing on your goals and focusing on what you need to do versus how it makes you look and how everybody else perceives you. For sure. Yeah. That's once you kind of get over that hump, it's a game changer. Yeah. I think I could, I think I would like to tell younger me that as well. Uh, Yeah. (laughs) People are going to say what they're going to say. Exactly. Okay. So what is your most embarrassing moment in your career? Mm, Embarrassing moment in my career. Yep. You have to screw it up at some point. Yeah. I can't (laughs) think of any of the, where I was super, super embarrassed because most of them weren't in front of a whole bunch of people at the time. Mm, Okay. I, so I guess I would just have to think like some, some, a time I did something that was a, a blunder. Um, it's probably a policy that I'm, that was made at some point in time that I thought was really clean and made a lot of sense. And then it just caused more confusion and frustration for people. Okay. Probably one that, pertain to how we were ha- handling customers that customers didn't really appreciate and I would say I was more frustrated because it, it made the the mistake was it made uh, the experience better for us but worse for them mm. and and my train of thought is we should even if it's a little more work for our staff but it's way easier for the customer we should do that so uh, there's not one that really sl- pops right to mind but i know there's been a few over the years where yeah. i've gotten some feedback from customers man your new policy is a real pain in the butt and <laughs> it really sucks you should change it and it's probably one of those okay well i'm sorry but uh that's it's now a capital offense to have created a policy that inconveniences customers yeah <laughs> uh so what, what's your last meal last meal yeah um Obviously, you get to choose anything you want. Yeah, which does make it a little tough. It's just tough because it, it's some. It would be. It would be hard for me to decide between sushi or Mexican food. See, the convenient part about it being a last meal is you just have. All I would have food. both of it. Yeah. Both then. It all would right. Be Mexican food and sushi, and probably some shrimp. I love shrimp. Interesting. That's quite a meal. Uh, are you gonna have any beverages with this meal? Um. If it's my last meal, I'm exactly. I don't. My favorite soda is Coca Cola, and I'd prop my favorite beer kind of changes, but I'd probably pick whatever my favorite beer was at the time. And then, uh, if I'm gonna drink a soda or something else, I'd be Coca Cola. So I'd probably have one of one of each. All right. <laughs> this is the worst ad for Coca Cola. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. If I'm about to die, I'm gonna drink a Coke. <laughs> All right. Uh, if you could change one thing about yourself, what would it be? Um, Again, this is one of those like you snap and it's changed, not a you have to work over time to get it. Because there's a lot of stuff you can work over time. So. Yeah. I would say probably making more time, uh, doing a better job of going out and spending more time with with. Uh, friends and family as opposed to working as much as that as I do I like to I like to work I like the work that I get to do and the people that I get to do it with so I find myself doing that a lot versus yeah going out and hanging out with friends and going to do stuff and things like that so probably a little bit better in the work-life balance department what is your spirit spice spirit spice Mm -hmm. I'm not sure what that is (laughs) it's there's no reason you should know, but think like spirit animal, but with spices. That's a great question. That, that must be why they <laughs> keep you around, Brian. No, I, I stole it from one of our uh, former sales guys who, okay. for some reason, asked it, and it's like we were all confused about it. But um, it's like, oh, I'm going to add that to all of these now. Yeah, that's that's tough because I have a fiery side, I have a, a sweet side. Mm. Uh. Man, I can't. I, there's so many spices, I don't even know the name of it. <laughs> that, that does make it a little tough. Uh, I, I would pick it with like, uh, there's some good barbecue rubs that are a little spicy, a little sweet out there. I, I yeah. like a 
You can just say a barbecue rub. You just don't a have barbecue to. rub that's spicy and sweet and has a little bit of everything, I guess. Okay. There's there's no brand sponsoring you. So yeah, there's no brand sponsoring. The yeah. Brand. <laughs> there's okay. some barbecue rubs in my in my uh, cupboard at home that are pretty much like that. I'm trying to think of the names, but I'm not I'm not succeeding. Well, that's okay. Maybe you can uh, you, you need to rack your brain for this one though. I need to know a secret about the rental industry. A secret about the rental mm-hmm. industry. You've been around it since you were a child. So, <laughs> um, we already learned one great tip: is if you're getting paid to pick up nails, just start with a box of nails. Yeah, that's a, that's a great tip. I think the viewers that are going to be needing that tip are a little younger. <laughs> that's to, true. Then they're probably not listening to this podcast. But Prob- probably not. Yeah. Otherwise, we got to question their parents. Like, why? Why are you? <laughs> what kind of content are you giving these kids? <laughs> um. Secret about the rental industry that's appropriate to share. <laughs> yes. Um, I would say that uh, it's it's a secret about the rental industry is is probably um, there. It's probably goes back to to a rate structure somewhere, like finding a rate structure that suits your business because they're not all they're not all equal like you're in every market's different and every state is different and if your business mix is a ton of day rentals versus no long-term rentals adjusting your rates to accommodate your customers for one or the other while still giving you a margin that you're happy with where you can make money and continue to grow your company is probably something to look at i think so many people just look at where the market is for rates and they're like, Oh, well that's where, yeah, that's where I'm going to be. And maybe that's not the best strategy for you. Maybe you're a company that's really good at day rentals and really bad at month rentals or really good at month rentals and really bad at day rentals. And you should play to your strengths. Okay. So this, the secret is that, uh, it's, it's a little more nuanced than just like looking at the people around you and seeing what are they pricing? I would say so. Okay. I would say so. It depends on your priorities too. Okay. And and finally, if we're like Andrew is, is our videographer and I sometimes we like to go out and, and visit customers. If we were to visit your operations, one of your locations, maybe a couple of your locations, what do you guys do really, really well at, at Rental Guys with Point of Rental that we would we would want to showcase? Really, really well with Point of Rental. Yeah. Um that's a great question. I would say w- number one being here at the conference for the second year in a row and then having some members of the team come on site. We had Sean come on site this year and John is, was in the area and he came by. We use a lot of point of rental features that a lot of other companies don't use. So compared to most other users, we're using probably 40 to 50% of the software where a lot of people have gone to other people's rental yards and seen it. They're using like 10, 15 that's usually what most percent. other people do say is like, what you maybe 10, 20%. Yeah. So you're saying like 40, we're, 50%. Wow. Probably in the 40 category, I would say we're using all the modules. Uh, we have integrations with Rouse, Smart Equip, various other companies. Uh, something that we do really well um, is, I would say probably our inventory management is, is pretty strong. The way our headers are structured. The way the headers are detailed, the specs are detailed, our website's pretty strong, uh, mm-hmm. our our marketing uh, team internally has done a really great job on our website and, and that. Um, so I would say inventory management, we have some processes and procedures where we're sending out reports and doing counts and keeping our inventory accurate, where I know that's a struggle at every rental company you can think of, and I think for the most part we do a pretty good job. Awesome. Well, uh, oh yeah, I needed to save another question for you as far as, is there anything that you wanted to talk about here today? Um, I forgot to do our pre-production meeting because we were, we were <laughs> rushing to start this. Yeah, thing. if anything I want to talk about today. What do you do when you're not at work at Rental Guys? Um, I like you said you wish you had more time. but Yeah, uh, sports, I'm a big sports fan, Dodgers fan, so watch okay. the Dodgers game. Uh, I like going. That's not allowed in Northern California, I thought. Well, there's Dodgers fans around. There's just not as many. There's not as many. There's a lot of Giants fans and some A's fans. Yeah. It's hard to be an A's fan right now, though. They won't be any. They're not doing so well. 
they're going to convert Dodgers, hopefully. Okay. Um, so that I have two dogs, so I like to spend time with my dogs. Okay. I grew up with my mom always had between three and five dogs growing up. A lot of a lot of animals. So you're scaling it back with just having scaling people. it back two is is perfect for me. That's a great number. More than yeah. two is too many. So that and then uh, spending time with family and friends. I do I do like to do that, especially family. All my family lives in the area, so being around them and you guys go to sports games or do you guys We do, but we live in the north part of the state where Oh yeah, you guys are way up there. three hours. Sacramento is an hour and a half, so going to pro sports games is challenging. But I like to travel around and go and do that. I've been to the Rogers Center in Toronto this year. Nice. And then uh, I've gone to uh been to another sporting oh a cowboys game yesterday oh there you go that was pretty cool i was gonna say are you one of those people that's like i gotta go to all of the the ballparks and uh, that's i actually have a board that was given to me as a gift on in my office where you put a a, a pin through all the ballparks you've been to okay so that's definitely something i want to to do is go to them all and a new it's i guess i wouldn't make it a goal but something i want to do is when you find out they're closing a ballpark oh yeah or a stadium's closing, I want to go to it before it closes because there there's a lot of really cool old ballparks that they take they take out of commission because financial reasons or yeah. the league puts putting pressure on them and going to experience them while they're still open is is cool. All right, cool. Well, thank you for joining me today, Avery. No problem. Thanks, Brian. All right, uh, and to everyone who who watched the rest of the video, uh, thank you for joining us today. And uh, what we'll leave the porch light burning for you. That's what we say. <laughs> Thank you. All right.